Hello, my fine friends. Welcome to yet another episode of Richard and Herring's Lester's Craft, the podcast, with my guest, Rose Matafeo. Um, if you like these podcasts, please support us by buying emergency questions, 1001 emergency questions, questions such as, uh, what's the worst thing you've eaten for a bet? Mine was I attempted to eat a pack of butter uh, for £50 and got one bite in before feeling very sick. Don't do that. Uh, you may have heard that story before. Also remember, we are sponsored this series by the fantasticbeer52.com. If you want eight free craft beers, usually they cost £24 for eight beers, you can get them for just £2.95. Packaging and postings included in that £2.95 uh, by going to beer52.com slash rahalastapa. Uh, buy the book from uh, gofasterstrike.com slash EQ. Uh, and uh, then you'll get these beers. And if you want to stop, you can stop immediately and not pay anything. Or you can carry on getting eight delightful craft beers from all over the world, different ones every month. It's a really good company. Uh, and doing that helps us make more podcasts. And you can get drunk. What's not to like? Anyway, let's sit back and enjoy another Rahalasta. Gentlemen, welcome to the Leicester Square Theatre. Please welcome a man whose breath smells rather too much of garlic, for which I apologise to people in the front row. It's Richard Herring! Thank you very much. Oh, yes. I had uh, no, I made myself a nice lunch of uh, spaghetti, olio, aglio, pepperoncino. It's pretty easy to make, but there's a lot of garlic in it. Can you smell it, Andy? No? Okay, cool. It'll start seeping out of the pores. Uh, as it's, it's still me from before. Did you recognise me? <laughs> <laughs> I had, a, I had a, a jacket on, didn't I? Uh, so, uh, welcome to uh, Richard Herring's Leicester Square Theatre podcast. Oh, I was talking to John Dalton the other day, who I hardly remind you, whose model of the atom uh, held that atoms were indivisible and indestructible, and that all atoms are of a given element are identical in mass. <laughs> Uh, was he right? Was he right, Dave? He's about wrong on both of us, isn't he? Double wrong. He calls it realist, but anyway, it's uh, realist from a slightly different, slightly different tack on the... Uh... <laughs> so, welcome to the show. Uh, I, um, I've been stone-clearing for about two months now. I've got some more observational comedy about for the stone-clearers. Because it's autumn time and that makes it difficult for, uh, as I record this, it's difficult because the leaves start coming down in the, you know, in the crepuscular light of the twilight. Very easy to mistake those for stones. <laughs> Isn't it? They, those guys know what I'm talking about. <laughs> and uh, also in the morning time, the dawn, it's, the light shines in a different way. And I've, I've th well, I think we've all experienced this, haven't you? When the ground spiders spin a web over the soil, that can catch the light, can't it? And they I think it's a stone, it's not, it's a, it's a web. It's literally a web of lies. And um, I think we've all been there and we wear, you, there's a, a dog shit and you pick that up thinking, we've all been there. And like, also the dog shit sometimes goes a bit furry, doesn't it? If you notice that people live in the countryside, it's, it's good. Keep on. Keep going through it. The winter's a hard time for the stone clearers, but it's worth it. I'll show you some pictures soon of how uh, the wall's coming on. So, uh, it's, uh, Sometimes I walk along and I just think, God, I can't see any difference. Am I might literally just wasting my time here? But it's, uh, it's like new stones turn up every day. And I had a ladybird in the house, late ladybird in autumn. That was kind of weird. Uh, and uh, it was kind of crazy. It's flying around looking a bit crazy. And then it flew in the bath. And then I got it out of the bath and saved it and put it on the side of the bath. And that really, I thought that ladybird the next day would be my ladybird slave. <laughs> Look after me, it didn't. It just died. Uh, so it's... Um, but it remind, who was alive in 1976 when uh, all those ladybirds attacked? Anyone remember that? Remember that, David? I was sitting on Western Supermare Beach and um, like a the sky went dark. I'm not even joking. And uh, like, then the whole beach was just covered in ladybirds and they were angry and they were biting. Who remembers this? I once met a, a ladybird expert who was so impressed to have met me, of someone who experienced the 1976 ladybird storms. She had sex with me. Uh, so it's, uh, that is, it was amazing. 
And I'm wondering, was that a ladybird? Was that a lady or was it a ladybird in human form that had come <laughs> to thank me? I haven't gone mental. So uh, it's, uh, we'll be talking more about ladybirds and having sex with people in insects in human form in this podcast. That's my guest. So will you... We'll get, our guest this week uh, is probably best known for playing Detective Tickleberry in Crumbs. <laughs> And it's hard for me to know whether that is like people in New Zealand are going, God, fuck that, she is best known for that. <laughs> or whether that is as ridiculous as it sounds. Will you please welcome, I hope, the amazing Rose Matafeo! Thank you very much. Thank you. Sit down. Sorry about the garlic. Sorry about the garlicky smell. I can't, I can't sense the garlic at all. Oh, it's going to come across, don't worry, during the, during the evening. Jeez. It's going to come out. I can't wait. Yeah. It's gonna come out. It's gonna come out. <laughs> <laughs> Where? Um, Thanks for um, that. That was the weirdest thing I've ever heard, intro I've ever heard. Yeah, is that? Were you in that? Yeah, I was. What was it? I was a strawberry. <laughs> <laughs> I was a strawberry detective. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> and um, yeah, we um, we, we investigated some crimes. <laughs> mostly, this? mostly murders. Yeah. Uh, no, that was a joke. Uh, <laughs> it was a children's cartoon, and um, yeah, I played Detective Tickleberry. No. Yeah. So was, was it a big part in the... It was oh, a huge episode, part. It took me a day to record, but, yeah. you know, it was, it was, it was, it was good. My, my most proudest... Uh, my, my, my proudest moment. It's not on Netflix? No, not on Netflix. I mean, not, I don't think available anywhere, to be fair. I, only in our imaginations <laughs> and memories. We'll look out for it. What about... Um, I nearly chose Sam in Pocket Protectors. Oh, Just yeah. Pocket Protectors. Po po pocket Protectors is when I played a pencil. Okay. Uh, <laughs> it was the same, it was the same company, was Muck it? Putty. Yeah. yeah, Muck Putty, who did, does these uh, amazing, amazing animations. Yeah, so I was a, uh, yeah, that one I was a pen pencil. Okay. It's po Pocket Protectors, again, yeah. investigating uh, murders, I think. Uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> murders no. and pencils. Yeah, yeah, just basically. To, just to Pencils have been sharpened basically, too, yeah. without being used. Mm -hmm. Assault, yeah, basically. Yeah. It's good. Okay, well, it's nice to know. Oh, blast in the past. I That's watch funny. a lot of uh, kids' TV. We had, uh, we had, uh, we had uh, Jess Robinson from Noddy Toyland Detective on the other week. So you know, it's, she it's on Toyland. Why are all of the, uh, the children's shows going so gritty? I don't know. It's Detective. Gonna... Yeah. What's Toyland Detective? She plays Detective? Smarty Saurus. Well, it's Noddy goes around Toyland trying to solve crimes, can't find out who did it, and just says the Gollywogs did it. So it's um. <laughs> Very true to the original books. That is, it's very true. That's what I liked. They've got rid of Fucking most of the characters. They call Fucking they naughty. call um, they call Big Ears Mr. Squeaks, isn't it? Oh, we all know what his real name is. Very <laughs> <laughs> really annoys, annoys me. What other what other ones do you watch? Uh, it, I watch it? everything. I, we, really? My daughter likes. Um, Super Monsters? Do you know Super Monsters? No. I mean, you haven't got kids, so it's unlikely you've yeah, seen Patrol through. Yeah, but I've heard of through. things, you know. Well, not these things, so they're all on They're, they're all, all new, Netflix. though. Do you find that they're, they're shit, more shit than what you had when you were younger? I don't know. I think they're better. Really? Like, my daughter did her first bit of stand-up about Super Monsters, because in Super Monsters... <laughs> Your daughter they, did stand-up? Yeah, well, she, 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 they, they, in Super Monsters, it starts, and they all go... They turn into monsters, and they go, Drax, Frankie! And, they do, and, then, they, and then at the end, when they turn back... To you kids, yes. they do the same thing again. Oh. And she turned to me and said, why do them keep saying their names? Why do they... And then she did that every time. Why do them, why do them keep saying their names? <laughs> In front of a tiny, like, brick yeah. wall. That's yeah. great, yeah. But I've That's actually... So... I would do it back to her, and now I still do it back to her, and she just looks at me like I'm crazy. She's forgotten. Because you're stealing forgotten. her material. <laughs> That's clearly what she's, she's pissed off. She's forgotten her bit. Now she goes, no, I understand why they're saying their names, because they're... She sounds fantastic. You should have her on the podcast. <laughs> we are, believe me, we're working through the family one by one. So it's, <laughs> it's going to happen. So, well, look, I would like, I'd say you are kind of a, a new sensational comedian, but you've been doing... No one not here knows who I am. Yeah, yeah, uh, so let's, be honest, let's be do. honest. Let's be honest. No, do. they don't. I don't think so. They do. You, Nish, that's basically <laughs> it. <laughs> you won the big comedy prize. Everyone knows you. But you've been doing comedy for like... 12 years, yeah. which doesn't oh, seem ten, humanly ten, possible. 10-ish ten, ten years? Yeah, yeah 10 so years. So you start when you're like 15? 11 years, yeah, 15, 11, about 15, 15. yeah. So, uh, no, yeah, I, I started doing comedy then, I, I guess. But that's, you know, just the first, like, open mics and stuff you do. and you know, it doesn't No really one does it at 50. I mean, like, occasionally you get kids doing stand-up, but it's hard. Yeah, isn't? and they're always fucking dickheads as well. Yeah, and uh, they are, and I was probably an absolute <laughs> asshole. It's a very, really precocious thing to do comedy at such a young... I had braces, I had a lot of thoughts and ideas, uh, and no one really wanted to listen to them. But uh, I had enough confidence to 
to get out there. But no, yeah, um, uh, no, I started when I was 15. It was sort of part of a school program that um, the Comedy Festival in New Zealand do. They do a similar thing in Melbourne where they get uh, like a school holiday program for kids who have no friends to hang out with during the holidays. <laughs> and uh, they put them through this like two, uh, two week long kind of boot camp with uh, comedy. Funnily enough, when I was 15, I've got my first ever set as a hidden link on YouTube. No one can ever see it. Uh, it is, um, it, but I went set, back. Of a set. So, a shark. For set. God they've got damn a kind it. Of, they've got a sort of funny set. way of speaking over there. I was taking set. the piss. Like oh, yeah, set. so you fucking colonise our country set. and then t make fun of the way we talk. Yeah. That's, <laughs> get fucked. Absolutely get fucked. Um, uh, so, my first set uh, is on, it's on YouTube. And, um, now I who's being racist? That's racist. <laughs> that's, that's, not, that's not how we say it. We say it right. <laughs> <laughs> I um, but I, I went back, and what was the most disappointing thing is that I went back, and I was like, "Shit, some of this is actually better than the stuff I write now." I was like, oh "God, I had a very unique comedic voice." Um, but no, it was it, it was uh, when I was fifteen. It was the first ever set, set I did, and um, Mark Watson was the um, uh, celebrity kind of judge who um, who deemed me the the winner of that competition. And so wow. yeah, so so yeah, it was very funny. That he was there for the first get every gig, and I saw him last week. And did you know him from Improvisation, my dear Mark Watson? <laughs> Have you seen, seen him in that? I did not. But, um, no. but yeah, and then I just keep That going big in New Zealand improvisation, huge, my dear Mark Watson. Huge, yeah. huge New Zealand. <laughs> that and Allo Allo. Uh, <laughs> that's genuinely the most what we got of British comedy, though. It's very funny. Like, we got the weirdest, the weirdest stuff, because uh, obviously there was only a, a, a little bit, like, uh, uh, that we could get on television there. So our idea of British comedy from New Zealand is, like, pretty fucked up. Yeah. Like, it's just weird. It's like Faulty Towers and... Hello, hello. Yeah. Like basically, that's those basically are the two things. it. <laughs> <laughs> that's basically one or the other. <laughs> More or less, what we've got variations on that. So um, let's talk. You, you're the third guest I've had out of the 191 guests wow. that I've had so far, and though some of them are doubles. Who lives in the same house in Shepherd's Bush that backs on more or less backs onto my house? Yes, in this is Shepherd's true. Bush. This is true. I mean, I'm not saying I don't cast the net wide on this thing. <laughs> Two of them are on this week. That is that's. Um, it's crazy. But that's kind. Of, that's sort of obviously it was that's a really weird. Yeah, it was yeah. a kind of comedian's house. So Stuart Goldsmith was in there. And, yes, I replaced Stuart Goldsmith. You were the uh, replacement. Yeah. I, I, yeah, that's when I first moved here. Here, I moved in with Nish. I've with always said they should never replace Stuart Goldsmith with a woman. That is that is, <laughs> that is, that is, that is wrong. It's PC gone mad. <laughs> yes. God damn it. No, yeah. Uh, so I took over his old room. Yeah. Uh, yeah. How it was, was it? What state was it in when you took it out, took it on? Very, very good. Was yeah, it? yeah, yeah. Nothing, nothing left. To, no, but no, he yeah. did move all the stuff out. No. Yeah. <laughs> Thankfully. Good. Yeah. No, it was, it was, it was good. It was a very nice flat. Got and you live with the Nish Kumar, who makes the Nish with Kumar. Next, yes. Week. Yeah. He's got a. He's 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 a good flat mate. Is he? We we eat a lot of Nando's. Uh, that's what I'll say. There's an Nando's like you know this across the road. Yeah. From our house, and um, yeah, that was. Yeah. They know our order, which is quite depressing. It's <laughs> very depressing, but yeah. Yeah, I'm telling you backstage, there was a uh, shooting in that Nando's in 2002. Yeah. Yeah. Someone was murdered in that Nando's, which, you know, I thought but would get now me a gets... cheaper house than I got, I have to say. Yeah. <laughs> Being close to that. But, but now yeah. everyone gets free olives. Yeah. So, that's a joke. <laughs> Nando's would never do that. <laughs> that would be a nightmare business model. So did you ever see me in the... There was a crossover. No, I really hoped I would because my, yeah. my, 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 uh, my bedroom kind of backed on to, um, to the backs of the, your, yeah, your, your yeah. house. So it was very Jimmy Stewart and Rear Window kind yeah. of, you know, trying to suss you out, yeah. find where you were. Never found you, though. No. Well, I was right at the window with my cock out. Yeah, I know. <laughs> it's, like, it's always the last place you look, right in front of you. <laughs> Turn around, you're in my house. So uh, <laughs> it's crazy. Do you yeah. think anyone's ever seen you proper naked in a, in a house? In my, well, I hope so. <laughs> <laughs> I hope my wife has. Yeah. Uh, it's um, uh, probably yeah. I used to. I used to. I was naked for about the first fourteen years of my life. In what? The minute I got home, I'd just take all my clothes off. <laughs> Even as you know, really too much too. How old. confident a child were you? Well, was, it, was it embraced in your in your in your uh, household? Uh, I was allowed to do it. Yeah, I remember my auntie. Jean yeah, allowed. Came. Not encouraged. My auntie Jean came over one time and was a bit like, I think it's a bit too old for this. Now. Was was everyone was everyone naked? <laughs> no. I just mean, you. Just me. I don't like wearing. I don't see why she. So I still do walk around naked quite a lot. That's fantastic. Yeah. Who walk? Who, does anyone walk around? 
by show of take off your clothes if you take <laughs> <laughs> you walk around naked, naked. Yeah, yeah. put your money where your mouth is uh, how long did you walk around naked in your house David until what age did you walk around naked till two two <laughs> <laughs> legend Andy McH 10, yeah. 10? Yeah. Holy shit, this and is I'd wild. I had junk now and wanted people to have a look and see what I was... I would say for saying I never... I really... I have a friend who really um, wants to have, as an adult, a pro um, waist... Like, uh, for, for girls, towel around the waist household. Boobs out. Right, OK. Make it normal. Yeah. I'm not there yet. Uh, <laughs> I'm inching my way down every shower, but... <laughs> But no, it, it terrifies me to walk, the idea of walking around naked. Uh, Shit, should I get into that? I don't it's know. just more convenient. You don't have to put clothes on. <laughs> don't you get cold? Nah. <laughs> I'm, fr- I'm pretty fat. <laughs> <laughs> just eat some more food. If you get, just eat, <laughs> eat some butter. <laughs> <laughs> Well, it's lovely to have another of the, the Shepherd's Bush. Yes, Nish yeah. still lives in the house, so we can't give too much uh, no, away about no, his, no. his secret location. Yeah, uh, secret location of... There's some French people live in my house now. I don't know if you ever saw them. Holy shit. Yeah, they're, they're always gonna... naked. <laughs> they're going to find it now, with all the, the Nandos and the French flag yeah. outside. They're going to hunt Nish Kumar down. <laughs> That's good. Have you, met the, have you met them? No. Okay. Because they live in my old house. <laughs> Truly, you meet them? No. Really? Yeah. Hand over the keys? No. Get, get that, left, uh, left that to the estate agent. Uh, so, uh, <laughs> take my keys, uh, you French. No, but they won't be there. Such relatable material as they well. Uh, <laughs> I'm trying to think of how to say take my keys in French, but I can't think of any of the words of any. Le, le, clef. Le, clef. Yeah, sure. Uh, take a le clef. <laughs> Prende le clef. Prende, prenez-vous, prenez-vous le clef, s'il vous plaît? <laughs> Got a few French viewers in as a result of that, so that's good. Apart from the racism beforehand. Um, well, let's talk about your heritage. I, what I love about your heritage is that I don't think this could have happened at any other point in human history. What? What? Well, you're half Samoan, yeah. one quarter Croatian, one quarter Scottish. Yes. Come that's on. That's how we do it in New Zealand, and baby. Then, come on. We're a mountain pot. Uh, no, yeah, no, yeah, it, that, that, that's, that's the mix, yeah. Well, that's what, that's, that's what's, you know, New Ze- that's what you get in New Zealand. Lots Jeez, of, that, there's a lot lots of, of, yeah, lots of Poly- you know, Polynesian culture and, 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 and immigrants from... Not so much Croatian culture. Yeah, well, no, um, the, the Croatians came down uh, in, two, in two big waves. And actually, they all, they, they all came down, Serbians and Croatians, and they all kind of started mi- mixing and mingling and started calling themselves Dalmatians. So I actually, I'm kind of, I always refer to myself as quarter Dalmatian and people make fun of that. So that's a l- wonderful <laughs> new facet of racism I've been exposed to uh, <laughs> in my life. But uh, no, uh, yeah, so they, they came down and um, a, lot, a bunch of them came down. Nice. Uh, my great, 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 uh, my great grandfather, yeah. yeah. And, um, uh, you know. And you go, but you on. said you were at Luton Airport going to Croatia. Do you go back to Croatia a lot? I only, there was the first time I ever went. Right. I went one place, didn't go to the place where my grandparents were born. Fuck that. Uh, I went to a lovely little fishing village for three days where they uh, filmed Made in Chelsea. Uh, so that was my heritage trip. That was my... <laughs> that was wonderful. But I know I should go back and, and figure out where I'm from. Do the, you know, it's find myself. I mean, Croatia's almost the most... In, no one talks about the Croatian bit of you very much, as I, in my experience. But of me... Yeah, because people are kind of interested in you being Scottish. You're so, kind of called Scottish Samoan. And yeah, yeah. Well, cry, yeah. Well, they they all they all came down to dig for c- Cody gum in New, in New Zealand. Lots right. of the uh, you know Croatians, and they made yeah. wine down in New Zealand. Good yeah. wine country in New Zealand. Um, but no, yeah. I mean, my 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 uh, my, my nickname's Ruja for my mum because okay. it's only okay. The only two Croatian words I know are my nickname and Muchi, which is shut up. So that's that's basically the extent of my heritage. But yeah, but no, Croatians got any Croatians in the crowd? There was the world, well, no, uh, clearly not. It was very awkward at the World Cup though. Yeah, I had to stay home, <laughs> go for Croatia by myself. It was very sad. I got very drunk. No, I can't remember. Was that the one that was? The, it was a big one. Was it the one that England, second one? Big was one. The one that England won five one, or did we lost? No, you, you beat us. No, no, yeah, we beat you. Yeah. And it was... So the tr- Scottish part of you was doubly happy. Yeah. <laughs> I was over the moon. Yeah. Yeah, oh, good. Well, that's... Uh, you we grew up in Auckland. This is a very easy question that I ask about... You're going to get this. Uh-huh. It's too easy. 
What's the tallest building in Auckland? The Sky Tower. Yeah. Why is that easy? Did anyone know that? Because it's the tallest building in the Southern Hemisphere. Is it? Yeah. Oh, yeah, it is. Shit. <laughs> I should know that. It's over, uh, it's over seven metres tall. Yeah. <laughs> Ha 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 ha! I'm from a tiny country at the bottom. Ah. <laughs> it's a revolving restaurant though. It's pretty cool. Yeah. Uh, at the top of Sky Tower, you get very sick because <laughs> you're revolving very slowly around the Sky Tower, and uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's hell. What's the best thing in Auckland that, that, for people to go and look at? Best thing in Auckland, um, maybe Kelly Tarleton's, uh, which is a uh, aquarium. No, nah, okay. it's not that good, actually. Uh, <laughs> it's not actually good. No, it, it, it's a bit worrying, the penguins enclosure. Uh, and there's a lot of carpet where I was like, don't have, a, don't have carpet in an aquarium. What the, <laughs> what the fuck's up with that? What is that? That's a nightmare. It's like when you have carpet in a bathroom. Yeah, no, I agree. Have you ever been... Oh, that's dis it disgusts yeah. me. Yeah, when I moved into my house in Shepherd's Bush, there was carpet in the bathroom. What? Yeah, you they're not that? for long, don't worry. <laughs> you ripped that up? Yeah. Lovely. I don't want the carpet with someone else's wee all over. <laughs> And definitely not with my wee all over it. <laughs> so you weed on it and pulled it yeah. out. That's great. Um, just weed on it till it evap it just dis disintegrates. <laughs> uh, yeah, so no, 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 that's not the best thing in Auckland. Um, probably just go up a mountain, in any mountain. Um, there's not much, there is, uh, I don't know, this is Come on, the, this, you've got go to, to sell a beach. Go to a beach. Okay. Go to a beach or... We've got beaches here. Nah, not Western well. Western Superman. As <laughs> if. Not as nice as New Zealand. Are you, cra are you crapping me? <laughs> I'd like to no apologise to the people of Western Supermare. <laughs> it's one of the nicest estuary beaches. I mean, there's. Have you ever been to New Zealand? As long as the sea's in, it's so it's okay in Western Supermare. Have you ever been to New Zealand? I haven't, no. Oh, when you got to, you got to go. It's a long way away, isn't it? Uh, <laughs> so I think it's a long way so to go. It's, it's the furthest away. It is. It's I've been to Fiji and I've been to. Oh, wow, well, close enough. Which is close, and I've been to Australia, which I understand is similar. That's to, very yeah. similar to New Zealand. Very similar. <laughs> Oh, huh. um, <laughs> no, no, um, no, that's no, you should go to New Zealand, it's okay. very nice. Um, I've got two don't... kids, I can't go anywhere anymore. I had my chance, I had 40 years to go to New Zealand, and I didn't take that chance. How, how old are you going to wait for the, them to get before you? Well, I will be dead. <laughs> <laughs> There's no way I'm getting to, I'd have to be like 70, and I'm not going to go to New Zealand when I'm 70, yeah, even can. if they got like teleportation by then. Still too much. Effort. If they had teleportation by then, you wouldn't even be bothered to go to New Zealand. <laughs> they have the the marvel, the scientific marvel, marvel of inventing teleportation, and you're still yeah. going to go like, no, nah. no, can't get a Western Superman. It's good enough for me. Can't believe it. That's where the uh, ladybirds came. Western Superman. That must be why it's on they my mind. Can't, yeah. <laughs> They've got literally Western Superman Beach. Once the sea, the, it's not the sea; it's a river. Once it goes yeah. out, yeah. It's just, it's literally mud. All mud. There's a bit of sand, and then it's a pier, and then it's mud, literally mud. All and mud. you walk out, and then you get stuck in the mud, and then the sea comes back. And, and you, you chose that as the beach to represent yeah. how good yeah. they I've are seen, in I've England. seen Lord of the Rings, so I reckon I know pretty much everything about Where the fuck is there a beach in there? That's, that's what New There's Zealand no is. There's no beaches in Lord of the Rings. <laughs> <laughs> There's a river. Yeah. There's that bit where the fellowship disbands. The, the mountain with the wah, wah, I've seen that wah. <laughs> And is that what you think of beaches? Yeah. <laughs> that's the best thing in New Zealand. Uh, uh, that's, and that's taller than the Sky Tower, actually. <laughs> that's, it, yeah. 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 I guess it's not a man-made Mount structure. Doom. It's made by a Sauron, whatever he is. What is he? Sauron, yeah. Yeah, so he's, a, he's a sour one. <laughs> that's my heritage you're talking about, <laughs> actually. So, how dare you? Do you think they filmed it in New Zealand just because of Auckland, like, oh, so they could just go Auckland? Yeah, I think that was the yeah, reason. I think that was. Yeah. Okay, <laughs> let's move on. They could get the sign. Yeah. So, uh, let's talk about your uh, award-winning show at just the age of 26. She's won the uh, Edinburgh Award. i 51. It hasn't happened for me yet, but... <laughs> Fingers crossed. Horn Dog. Yeah. So, you're touring this as well in the new yeah. year? Yeah. Yeah. No. No. <laughs> Are you doing it in the... Uh, oh, doing I'm, doing it, I'm doing it in London. Yeah, I'm doing it in London. But I did another two weeks of it, yeah, right after Edinburgh. Okay. Yeah, I might take You've really got to tour it. Why are you not going to tour it? Uh, I've never toured before. And, um, Give it and, a go. Uh, and it requires a projector. <laughs> <laughs> and that's a fucking hassle, isn't it? That's, well, it is. Have you ever tried to set up a projector in a rural town? <laughs> yeah. 
It's hectic. You've got to take someone who can do it. I've got. I've God, had projector no. in a couple of my shows. You really? Just take someone with you. Can. See, I, I don't. I, I've never. I've never done that. I've done. Get sort of them things. to drive the car. Yeah. And give them. You don't have to give them like 150 quid. <laughs> if that. Yeah. If that. Maybe a hundred and some nice words yeah. <laughs> in the car. Um, yeah, no, I, I should, I should actually talk. No, I don't know. I am, um, uh, but yeah, I, I've done it. I've done it quite a lot now. I've, I did, I did it in Melbourne and then I did it in Edinburgh. So um, yeah, a, quite, a, quite, a, quite a, nearly a hundred times, probably nearly sure. ending up a hundred times. Hundred times. About a hundred. It's yeah. a lot. So move on, do something else. I know. Yeah. Well, that's what I feel like. To except be fair. Except at the Soho Theatre. Yeah. Except in, the Soho in Theater. January. In January, I'm doing two more weeks, which will be exciting. Fantastic. Yeah. I love doing it. It's it's fun. What is the premise of the? Is it is it is a themed around? Um, the premise is it's just a stand up show, really. It's um, I mean, let's be honest. The t the name is atrocious, uh, <laughs> and I certainly didn't imagine. Like, I think that shows it's a reflection of how little ambition I had for the show. <laughs> In the sense that I certainly didn't imagine it being engraved on a thing <laughs> next to my name, which is now in my room that says Rose Mustafao Horn Dog. <laughs> that's, that's literally the name that's gone down in some sort of history as one having won something. Yeah. Um, but the uh, the whole show is just about how um, uh, it, was, it was kind of inspired by how um, I. I think of the concept of horniness, I think, is is a concept I was really interested in in the sense that I think I am a very obsessive person and I put a lot of effort into things. As, as you, you know, starting comedy at 15 and stuff, like that's that's the, not the, that's, that's the <laughs> mind of a very weird um, person, I guess. But um, yeah, uh, it's uh, kind of about how I throw myself into things and I go, I go, I go hard or I go home. And so that's basically the premise of it, is that I have a lot of time on my hands and um, very in particular interests. <laughs> like uh, learning K-pop dances in my room alone as a 26-year-old adult woman. Yeah. So, yeah. I yeah, clear stones you. off a field. So. Do you? Is yeah, that your, so is your that's, hobby? That's what I do is my hobby. So, you know, nothing you can say can, <laughs> can make these people feel sorry. For you know? <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, no, it's well. I, I was watching clips of your stand-up on yep. uh, YouTube and various things today, yep. and it's, it's sort of very, it's it's very interesting to see. Um, well, you're very open about uh, sexuality and, uh, yeah. and and female f things, which I think like is yes. that's what we call them. female things. <laughs> Strong, hey, and I can I say you, I am you, not, that, so you, that I, came off really well. Just said that you you nailed that. Let's edit that out. Uh, uh, <laughs> Female things. Uh, female. That sentence is the equivalent. You know, right. That sentence is the equivalent of like getting a dad getting their mum to buy tampons at the it supermarket. Is. Well, I am now at that stage of my life. I have to say where it's all. But you know, you do. Well, it's interesting because you talk about periods and birth control and things like that. And yes. traditionally, and I was thinking about this because they're great routines and they're also routines that. Um, as a man, yeah. the things that I haven't considered. So you do do stuff about birth control, about the psychological effects and the side effects of um, birth y control. Yeah, yeah. Uh, there's a great routine about talking about um, uh, length of periods, about you, about <laughs> <laughs> the women who show off about having three day periods as yeah. opposed to five day periods, which as a man you don't really think about. Yeah. But I know about, but it's really interesting to see. But also there's that kind of stereotype of, and there's certainly when I started, yeah. uh, female comedians only talk about this, this, yeah, and, this yeah, yeah. and this. And then, that, but that was a way of like closing yeah. women and their experience down, wasn't it? It was like saying, oh, you're not allowed, men are allowed to talk about their dicks as much as they want, but 100%. women women aren't allowed to do observational routines well, about this stuff. Yeah, and so I, actually nobody does those routines really hard. No, I think I, also I'm, I'm lucky enough to have come up in a time where I think a lot of, amazing women who did comedy got so much shit for that and they had to bear so much of that because they were the minority in that room you know in terms of gender and they had to put up with so much of that crap where in a way I think a lot of them perhaps um, uh, stop stop doing that kind of material or kind of kind of disassociated from yeah. that or speaking about their experience of, of, of those things and I was lucky enough to come up in a time where I was able to talk about that stuff without that pressure of of that being a typically, you know, female comedian thing to do. Sure, sure. I, I, I just genuinely had no um, uh, qualms about talking about that stuff. But that perhaps is 
more indicative of the kind of safe environment I started comedy in. But um, and, and the audiences who are just more receptive to it, and people who are just less like you can you can call out an audience for like having it taking issue with that. It's like what the fuck? What is wrong with you? Yeah, yeah. exactly. You but know. you know, it is. I just it, it really struck me how much that shut. You know, the, and you see it yeah. still if you look at, at any female comedians. The comments on and yes. there's an article about you in the Guardian, which is a nice, nice review yeah. in the Guardian, and all the comments underneath. Are just men going? Oh, are women talking about this? And it's just men. I didn't men, read men. those comments, Richard. Yeah. So uh, I won't tell you what that. I can't wait but, to go home and s- ha- spiral. Uh, <laughs> but it's I'm just sure. so disappointing to see, you know. But that, but there's men shutting down, going, "Oh, this isn't my experience, so therefore I don't want to watch it." And you oh, sort yeah. of think how much that was the case, you know, in those days. That I, you know, 20, 30 years ago, 10 years ago, where pe- someone in an audience is going, oh, this isn't aimed directly at my experience, yeah, I, therefore I'm going to shut it down. I think, me, I think that, 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 that those kind of commenters are just, it's, they're, I love it that to be actually angry not to be spoken to by every person in every medium. <laughs> yeah. Like, not everything is made for you. Yeah. Like, how many fucking girlfriends have to go to Pacific Rim with their boyfriends and be like, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, not necessarily like, you know, like you, you forget how much of mainstream culture is catered towards men. And because it's the default, people don't recognise that until I think, especially my experience of doing any material that's particular to my experience of being a 26-year-old woman is, is that... Uh, you do a joke and there is a certain pocket of the crowd who will laugh much harder because they're just, they haven't been spoken to previously yeah. uh, and, and I guess mainstream comedy and it's an amazing thing to, to feel connected to people in that way, you know what I mean? It's a, to, to feel like, yeah, people haven't been spoken to in that way and that's what happens when you have more... I don't know, diverse voices on, on stage, it's really... Yeah, well, it's, it's interesting. And I think I saw you in an interview saying someone, had, a man had come up to you afterwards and saying, oh, my, my, wife, my girlfriend's on birth control and I'm, I'm taking her off birth control yeah, tomorrow yeah. as a result. He was wasted. <laughs> uh, I think he may have regretted that in the morning. Uh, but, yeah, he, re- he freaked out. But, like, but, but, yeah, there are a lot of people who, yeah, after those shows are like... But it's just because when you, but they haven't heard that those kind of takes on it, yeah. then, yeah, if you're not exposed to it. But it's funny, interesting... They say, you know, like, I think every generation, though, especially with women doing comedy, I think there's different things that people get furious about them talking. It's a constant censorship of what they're saying. Like, if, if it's if it's not, you know, talking about periods or talking about, you know, like, uh, I guess in the 90s, I feel like it was like, why are all these women just talking about this shit? I think even now... But they kind of weren't, that's the thing. Is they well, they say, yeah. A, there weren't any, you know, there was five female comedians and yes. they wouldn't talk about those things anyway. So it's, it's sort of... Mm-hmm. It's, it's really bizarre that that... It's just funny. It, it took me to see that. Like, oh, that's, that stereotype is so ridiculous. I feel like it still happens now, though. It's in, yeah. like, uh, and, and particularly, I think sometimes I, I think people have take issue with uh, women talking about their appearance. And so a lot of... And, and it's kind of in that way of being like, why do women have to talk about their appearance on stage? You know, it does, does, does women down, you know? It's not about your appearance. It's like a, almost a woke type of yeah. kind of, you know, like telling a woman what to talk about. Um, and uh, yeah, it, it's so it, it it happens a lot, but um, but thankfully, thankfully, it's a it's a lot easier. I still you still get oh you still get the classic person after a gigs being like, I usually hate female comedians, but you, darling, you are a rare diamond in the rough, you know. <laughs> Like you are special. You're not like those other girls, and <laughs> and you get that so every every woman gets yeah. that, and it's it's um it's just stupid and wild. And it's very it's hard to react than, to. It's better than saying I don't like female comedians, <laughs> and you have confirmed. <laughs> yeah, <that. yeah>. <laughs> I'd almost prefer that. Yeah, I'd almost prefer. Once I got um, after a gig in New Zealand, in like a small town in New Zealand, um, a drunk man in the car park was uh, 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 trying to talk to us. The lineup, and um, it was uh, he went, ah, oh, thanks, Jeremy, thanks, Corey, the other two guys, and like, thanks, Jamie. And he looked at me, he went, thank you, Mrs. Skirt. <laughs> I was wearing jeans. Uh, <laughs> So, you know, that's, this is the vibe. We're still living it, guys. Yeah. I was, you weren't married. I wasn't married. I was unmarried. I know. My God. I wish I could be a Mr. Skirt. <laughs> Just single old Ms. Kalotz. <laughs> and when you won the, the Comedy Award, you're the New Zealand Prime Minister, mm. who everyone, I mean, we know her name, so you don't need to... Jacinda Ardern. Jacinda Ardern? Ah, what the fuck are you doing? Yeah. How dare you? Jacinda Ardern. Jacinda. Yeah. Jacinda. Um, she's cool. She tweeted you to congratulate you. Yeah, she. I know her. 
<laughs> well, of course. <laughs> She's great. Yeah. yeah. She's, she's been she's been to see Nish's show. <laughs> she, honest to God, yeah. She yeah. went to see him. Yeah, Did she's you tweet a... you, Nish? No. No. <laughs> Any prime ministers ever tweeted you? No. no. <laughs> Gutting. <laughs> and when it happens, it will be for the wrong reasons. <laughs> <laughs> Um, but yeah, um, just in, yeah, she's no, she's super cool. She's a patron. She's the minister of the arts and culture and stuff in New Zealand, and she's um, she's very hip. She goes to see comedy all the time. Had yeah. a baby. Had a baby. Oh, I know. She was prime minister. Know, That's incredible. pretty cool. She's super cool, and she's actually just very, very good sense of humour as well. Do you think Theresa May's still doing it? <laughs> doing what? Fucking. Yeah. <laughs> what? <laughs> Uh, that's going to go down well on the podcast as well. <laughs> what happened there? <laughs> yeah, it's horrific, isn't it? I hope she is, though. I mean, I wouldn't wish that upon anyone not having... I would hope she is having sex, so... You know. Not good sex, but, you know. <laughs> sex. Is that weird, me saying sex in the... Accent? No, that's all right. We got used to it. Uh, it's like, we worked but out yeah. sex. It's sex. But that was cool, no. I was, I was very... Sex. Oh, I'm Austin Powers. No. <laughs> oh, oh, shagadelic, baby. Very, very offensive. <laughs> no, very, very offensive. I love it. Austin Powers is genuinely my favourite film when I was a, t- a, a kid. Yeah, it's I, a good film. A freaking good film. I saw it at the movie theatres with my nan. Yeah. And I wrote about it in my school book. <laughs> it was 1999, I saw A Spy Who Shagged Me. I was seven years old. <laughs> yeah, full on, eh? It was, but it was awesome. Yeah. What do you think about the Scottish character in the later films? What, gold, and gold member? Yeah. The, well, it was in two and three, yeah. Yeah. Wonderful. He, he nailed stuff. it, didn't he? He, nailed Na- it. he absolutely nailed it. If he hadn't nailed the Scottish thing enough with Shrek, he really got it. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe Shrek was from New Zealand and some half New Zealand. No, it was directed by a New Zealander. There you go. Yeah. Yeah. Andrew Adamson. Good idea. Yeah. Could be that could explain the accent. So, uh, probably Croatian, Croatian Scott. Yeah, Croatian New Zealand. Scott, weird mix. Yeah. Yeah, nice. Um, you're the voice of the millennials. No. What's going on with all that? No. Explain. I'm 51. No thanks. What's all? What's it all about? I don't want. <laughs> what's going on? You're all. So you sound like you want to try to score some drugs or something. <laughs> So, you know, what's up? What's, what are you guys doing these days? Yeah. Um, what's up? No, I'm not the voice of millennial. I just happen to be, uh, you know... I mean, yeah. I guess I'm official. I don't know what... I'm, what is a millennial? What's the official uh, time frame, you know, the, the I think you can be born in the 80s, can't you? Late 80s? Yeah, you can. Yeah, sure. So it's anyone who was a... Is it anyone who's ad- turned an adult in the... I don't even know what it is. is it Let ju- alone all the stupid things you believe in. But I... So this is a point, though... <laughs> I think that there should be enough... I feel like I belong to, the, I guess, millennials as a group, but I think that there is an even smaller... There's a subset within that, of generationally. Yeah. And I talk about it in my show in the sense that I, rem- I belong to... A, I'm on the cusp of being a person who remembers the world without the internet. I think that is the biggest generational gap, really, that we've got. Like, I rem- you know, you remember not having freaking like, access to all of the information in the world at any given point. So yeah. I, I, feel, I feel very much the older end, the older <laughs> spect- end of the spectrum when it comes to, bless you, uh, when it comes to, um, uh, yeah, being you a You can only end. just remember it, though, can't you? Because there was, there was, the internet was in, ni- you were born in... I'm ni- from New Zealand. 92. <laughs> What are you talking about? Okay. Yeah. No. Uh, no. We got dial up when I was probably about. Yeah. Probably about mm, seven. Okay. Yeah. But yeah. Yeah. So those first seven years. They were, they were hell. <laughs> they were hell on earth. Well, I remember. Pl- like, I mean, I. I mean, I know that this sounds. I, I, I am. I know I'm 27. I remember physically taking a cord out of the wall and putting it into a computer to load the trailer for Lord of the Rings: The Fellowship of the Ring. You know what I mean? Like that's that's that's. I think there's a there's a there's a gap between you know people who have grown up with it, yeah. but but no, I, I I feel very uncomfortable with that uh, that t- title, and I do not accept it. I remember when a photo, fo- if you were looking at a photo of something, yeah, <laughs> whatever it happened to be, <laughs> it would come like a line at a time. Yeah. Yeah. So like not a trailer, a fucking photograph. <laughs> 
it's quicker just to buy all the peanuts and get them off. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, <laughs> I remember the good old days where you discovered porn in a bush when you were doing cross country at school. That's, that's how I discovered that. We still got something in common then. That is good. <laughs> She was born in 1992. Come on, Dave. Imagine that. There are some people who were born Imagine. in 1995, Richard. No. <laughs> I won't accept it. Won't Do you know that? It. I met oh. one the other day. It was disgusting. I won't accept it. What were you doing in 92? Uh, I was, uh, I was w writing for the radio. I mean, I, you know, you're 26. I was on TV by the time I was 26. I'm a wonderkind like you. But look at me. <laughs> look where you can end up. Is uh, no. <laughs> I started doing comedy. I wrote My Penis Can Sing when I was 15, I think. And uh, <laughs> I was doing comedy. We were doing radio shows in 92. I was wow. writing for On The Hour. I was, writing, I was creating Alan Partridge in, uh, in 1992. <laughs> I was, uh, I was, I'll talk about this next week, but I was at the uh, PTA quiz in my village <laughs> this weekend. This is what my life's become. And uh, awesome. the guy next to me said, what, do you prefer the... The Far Show or League of Gentlemen? I said, I think League of Gentlemen is the better. Yeah. He said, do you, Who do you think? What do you think? Steve Coogan's best character? <laughs> and I said, It's Alan Partridge, obviously. Yeah. So yeah, I, I, and then I said, I wrote the first things he ever said. He said, Oh, I thought I'd get more. <laughs> uh, so I, I obviously, they're used to superstars in my Hertfordshire village. Um, but we'll talk about that. We'll talk about that. I've got a good story about the quiz coming up next week. <laughs> until next it's week. Exciting. It's better than the Stones. Um, you've got a cat, or yeah. you, I don't know if you still have, called wow. Burt, Burt Backer Cat. Yes. Did you not consider... Well, Burt Backer oh. on my shirt there. Did you not consider calling it Burt Catter Backer? <laughs> With a cell like that, yeah. surely I'll, just, <laughs> I'll change his name. <laughs> What, what are you holding up your beard? I'm holding up my uh, beard. I just thought that would be seeing I fucked up that joke. Uh, the reason I fucked that up is because of this Pilsner that comes from beer52.com. <laughs> uh, you can get eight free beers. Imagine how fucked up you'd be if you... You but, too can but, fuck up at your job. The reason it's not but cataract. But then it'd be like cataract. Cataract, yeah. I don't want to wish that upon... No, it doesn't work. It doesn't work. Well, really, but... But back, back a cat. cat doesn't work. Well, it works, baby, and it's happening. <laughs> it really does not work. I once um, tried to meet him outside of one of his concerts. I waited for two hours um, to try and meet him at stage door. Your cat or the old bird back right? <laughs> That's how I met my cat, at the stage door. <laughs> I was like, come on with me, man. Uh, no, yeah, Bert Baccarat, yeah. Yeah, yeah I'm a big, big fan, big yeah. fan. Mm, he's, he, seems, he seems like an asshole, but... Uh, <laughs> But you, you, they were in the 60s, weren't they? <laughs> you can't get around it. Um, but no, yeah, big fan of Burt Bacharach. You wait for so. two hours and he didn't turn up or he turned up I think he, I think through. he slipped out real early and I uh. missed him, yeah. But yeah, I went, went to that concert alone. Okay. And left alone, turns out. <laughs> Not that I was trying to bone <laughs> Burt Bacharach. That sounds weird. But yeah. I, lo I love it how we've already got down to the questions about my cat's name. That's... <laughs> I think that's a good question. No, it is a good question. Thank Would you, you have a cat? Uh, I've got a cat called Smithers. I had two cats, uh, Lino and Smithers. Oh, let's go. Cool. Lino died at uh, three years old. I'm sorry. Yeah. I saw the life drain out of her eyes <laughs> as I strangled her. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, essentially, I paid a man to stick a needle in her. Were you there? Yeah. Holy shit, that's terrifying, man. I held man. her paw as she died. No! Uh, that's so it's, sad. It's the only thing I've ever literally seen die in front of me. Really? Well, I mean, you know, like, not the only thing. I killed a ladybird the other day. Uh, <laughs> but, uh, no, so yeah. Was it, was it, was it horrible? Yeah, and yeah. I don't even like the cats that much, and I was yeah, really upset about it. But it's it. a full on thing to see. Because their eyes, yeah. they're alive, and then. I Did can understand to... why serial killers get off on it now. Because <laughs> if that vet hadn't been there, you'd have been, woo, you'd been into it. A lot Did of them to... start by killing small animals. She was so, I don't know, I was very upset about Lionel. <laughs> I'd much rather it was Smithers, he's a prick. Uh, <laughs> he got the prickish one. Oh, do you think he's aware that he, you didn't love his, him as much? He can't, as he's Lionel. deaf, so he can't hear. Oh, shit. Yeah. <laughs> Awful. And I like the way that everyone's accepted that. Yeah, it's fine. He does. He couldn't hear what I was saying. I, so um, it's fine. 
with <laughs> Charlie says. There we go. Take that, millennials. Fuck yeah, I'm gonna get that. I'm gonna get that reference. Millennials from New Zealand. I paid a grand to get my cat saved, basically. Yeah. Um, he, he had, had to get a to tooth operation, but yeah, I could have either put him down or paid a thousand dollars New yeah. Zealand, and I paid the money, and oh, I regret no. it to this day. Yeah. <laughs> nah, he's alright. He's, all right. <laughs> he's an yeah. asshole. He's an absolute yeah. asshole. My cat. I completely get it. Yeah. He's an yeah. He's a dickhead. I mean, my Hate wife's him. my wife's made me love other things. That's what I don't like about her. I liked her. Yeah. And I didn't really like anyone else or anything yeah. else. And then she gave me pets that I then had to love, and then oh. I did love. And then children, and they've got to love them as well. That's I was the happy. sweetest thing I've I ever was heard. Happy. I was happy, you know, not caring about anything. Holy, just like the end of Love Actually or something. <laughs> this is amazing. Right, I've got a new emergency question for you based on my Ladybird story oh, that you cool. may not have listened to. I was, it was. Um, to it. Have you or do you suspect you've ever made love to an insect that has taken human form for a night? <laughs> Have, suspected, or hoped? Um, no. Wait, hang on. Insect. <laughs> An insect taking... So how, how human... Okay, so how much... Is it, like, kind of suspicious that it might be a, an insect? Yeah. I think probably, you know... You probably know I mean, if, because... If the answer is yes, I've made love to an insect that took human form for a night, I want to hear that story. But if that story does not come to mind, then... No. Do you think you might have done... Is there anyone you think you've had uh, sex with? Or I've had, had sex with not many people, okay. so the pool is small already. Who was the most uh, insect you want? Who was the most insect? <laughs> I'm just trying to think through my sexual history, who was... If the one of the, yeah, maybe, a couple. Yeah. Uh, very mysterious. <laughs> Ones? No, I'm, yeah. I, I think I think I'd be okay with it. Well, I don't know I, what I what I'm interesting. Uh, I wait. Would you not be okay with it if you found out I mean, that it was an insect after? Yeah. yeah, I'm not. It's not of saying we had sex with an insect. Yeah, absolutely. No, really. no, if after take... if after we had sex, the guy was like, "Oh, well, sorry. Um, I should have mentioned this before. Um, <laughs> I'm actually an insect who has taken human form." Yeah. I'd be like, "Sweet." It's quite romantic. It is kind of romantic, and I mean, thank all, you for telling me. All these people watch, like, The Little Mermaid, and think, oh, that's nice, The Mermaid took human form for a bit, or whatever it did, exactly. I haven't seen it. Uh, <laughs> you know, that's a fish taking human form, and you're all cool with that. What if, what if it was... A, I always think about this about, like, artificial intelligence and stuff, and, like, the way the world's going. Like, if you had sex with someone, and then afterwards they were like, yo, um, I'm a robot. Yeah. I uh, haven't really thought about it. I haven't really like, given much thought. <laughs> I'd say, why didn't you tell me before? You fucking ruined the whole experience. I could have savoured it. No. <laughs> um, yeah, would you be okay? I feel like, I feel like I'd be fine with well, it. Well, like but I think if the robot had fallen in love with you as well, especially in, you know, broken its protocols, <laughs> in order to make love with you, that, again, that's a very romantic thing. Do you think a robot... I've been programmed not to love or have sex, <laughs> but I, I cannot resist. Okay, I'm just questioning how you didn't know it was a robot before <laughs> you fucked it, if it's speaking like that. No, seriously, Richard, I'm not a robot. A lot of people are very intimidated when they meet me, so a lot of people... <laughs> what is the largest number of insects that you've been attacked by at one time? Because I've got, like, a whole load of ladybirds. I bet in New Zealand it must happen... Yeah, the, like, the insects are probably, like, as big as that, aren't they? And they're flying in. <laughs> Yeah, there is. Yeah, there are some as big as that. No, yeah. I'd say about. I'd say safely, like fifteen. Fifteen insects. Yes. Which, which insect? What? Probably flies or mosquitoes. Flies. You know. Yeah. yeah. Flies. Oh yeah, of course, mosquitoes. Lots of mosquitoes. Yeah, that's the best yeah. thing about living in this country, and nothing else. Is that? <laughs> uh, is that there are no mosquitoes, and um, I get bit. I've I've once had uh, over a hundred mosquito bites on my body one, before, wow. one time. Yeah, it's horrible, horrible stuff. So you have made love with some insects. Yeah. They tried to. They made love to me for sure. Yeah. Do you remember when there used to be lots of midges? There aren't midges around in the same way, are there, David? Midges. In they're in Scotland. They're out there they're in Scotland, are the midges? Yeah. How do you make fun of how I speak and you call things midges? It's, <laughs> it's the craziest name for something. Midges. Is a midge smaller than a mosquito? Yeah. Yeah, and it's not, the bites aren't as bad, are they? Yes, they are. Are they? Mm. Yes, they are. <laughs> do they give you malaria and kill you? Is that, is that why you started wearing clothes when you were two? <laughs> What's happened? What's happened to you with midges with you, David? You breathe really? them in. Oh my 
my god, it's like the opposite purpose. of the Green Mile. That's crazy. <laughs> and they bit you inside. Is that why they bit, they went down your throat and bit you, yeah. and then they came out your <laughs> willy. <laughs> When was this? How old were you when you breathed in these midges? About 12. About 12? Yeah. Shoot, man. Has it, has it started, stayed with you, Dave? Because, you know, you're like about 72 now, aren't you? <laughs> Never trust a midge. <laughs> Sorry to bring it up, David. If I'd known, I would have done a trigger warning at the beginning if I knew. It's what these lot have, we have to do because of this lot. <laughs> if I'd known, we'd gone to a don't, safe... Don't point, at, don't point at the half Samo and say this lot. <laughs> Um, yeah, well, RIP. That's uh, so sorry about the midges. <laughs> that sucks. Yeah, we don't have that. Yeah, we. Uh, I guess we don't have a good up here. What? Do you have any good murderous insects or arachnids in New Zealand? No. Nah, well, it? we got some. We got some dangerous spiders. But like, it's it's pretty crazy how uh, few like deadly things we have compared to Australia. Like, yeah. we're very very docile kind of uh, flora and fauna yeah. in New Zealand. It's so very safe until. The you know the English came over and bought fucking stoats and weasels and shit, and their and their boats. Thanks for that, guys. Um, and killed all of our native birds. So, you know. Sky Tower, though. That's true. Weigh it up. Revolving restaurant. <laughs> Kiwi birds. Yeah. No, there no kiwis in. There must be. They're some. endangered. Yeah. Are they? But basically, every bird is endangered. Yeah. Yeah. Because, because, because the idea is that they brought, I think they brought stoats over and they're like, oh, what, what, basically it was like, whatever kills the bigger thing. Like, so possums are, um, uh, um, um, uh, are a, a, a predator in New Zealand as well. Okay. So, you know, they brought possums over to eat the stoats or whatever. I don't know. <laughs> really thought that through. <laughs> it's like a whole country of the woman who swallowed a fly. Exactly. That's what, yeah. exactly. That's exactly it. <laughs> Dark story <laughs> to, to tell to children, eh? Yeah, it is. It's full on. It is. Yeah. But I like that they, do, they take too many dark things out of kids' stories now. We're talking this, I think, to Jess. Yeah. About how, like, Cinderella and stuff, it's all quite nice now. And yeah, yeah. You know, it's the. I'll tell you what's a weird story, yeah. and that my daughter got brought back home from school was The Princess and the Pea. Fucking weird. Like, what was she doing out? In the rain as well, like in the she rain. Was she, was she, that's where she came into from to the castle, right? Well, in the, in the version my daughter has, which I don't, this shouldn't be a book in the twenty first century. A prince is looking for a wife, but he, she has to be a princess to marry him. Yeah. Has to be a princess, and so he's, he, he he likes a girl, and his mum says, "Nope, she's not a princess. She can't marry her." Yeah. I mean, it's accurate. Yeah. Uh, it's actually not not really in it with the current voice, uh, but uh, and then. She puts the pee under lots of mattresses, yes. and then. A, but like, if I was that woman, I go, what, "What's with all the mattresses?" <laughs> yeah, yeah. My first this question. This is probably a test. Pre the pee question. I reckon. A is it not common knowledge that princesses can? If it's not common knowledge, how does this mother know about the princess and the pee thing? Yeah, true. But if true. it's common knowledge, just go. If you put in an unusual bed test, go. <laughs> oh yeah, blimey! Whoa, that hurt. Yeah, I'm a princess. I, I, um, I really do love... I, I know what you're talking about, though, those old school ones where it's like you read the real backstory of it, like The Little Mermaid, where it's like the real ending of Little Mermaid is that she gets punished forever and it feels like she's... So whenever she has the tale yeah. and the grim fairy tale, it's that she's got, the, she, she's got the feeling of dancing on glass. That's her punishment for trying to... like not. Sorry, when she does... Yeah, she gets rid of her tail when she walks. It's like, it's like dark as hell. Yeah. Like Rumpelstiltskin, that's messed up as hell. Do you guys have Rumpelstiltskin up here? They made, they made it up here? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, up here in the northern hemisphere. Yeah, we do. I know. Who's just yelling their own name in the woods alone? <laughs> that's what I want to know. Again, if you set a test, yeah. people would find out your name. Just, just hold back on, sh just keep just going. Just wait. Don't go there. Not, yes. <laughs> as long as they're not listening now. I love Rumpelstiltskin. Rumpelstiltskin, I like it. <laughs> this is good Death stuff. Do what? Yeah. <laughs> Woo! Very good. They told me it'd be a good idea to be sponsored by a beer company in my podcast until I lost the ability to speak. Um, 
Hey, you met Amy Schumer. You did, did, you, did you meet lots of Hollywood stars or was it only Amy Schumer? I thought you interviewed <laughs> I, I used to work on a show called Jono and Ben back yeah. in New Zealand where I did lots of press junkets yeah. and stuff. I did a segment called Speed Dating, so um, uh, where I just would have speed dates with uh, with our guests and stuff, and I did lots of press junkets with um, yeah Americans. So uh, Amy Schumer was one, and Bill Hader, and, and it was very fun, but um, very nerve wracking. I, yeah. I, I did a, I did a um, press junket for Dumb and Dumber, the 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 sequel. Did anyone see that? It's fucking shit. <laughs> it is the worst film. I, I fell asleep in the screening, but I um, had to interview Jim Carrey and um, and and um, uh, did Jeff you tell Daniels. him it was shit? Yeah, Imagine you've just gone, I've seen Dumb and Dumber. Right. It's oh, fucking shit. 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 You've now. torn down your legacy. <laughs> yeah, um, but that was, um, that, was, that was full on. Adam Sandler, did you meet him? No. 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 <laughs> I love how that was just a question. No, I didn't meet Adam Sandler. Have you met no. Adam Sandler? No, I, uh, I dream of the day. Really? Yeah. Big fan? I've, I've seen all of his films. All of them? Yeah. All of them? Yeah. What's your favourite? <laughs> I mean, in what? Uh, by, by what? Uh, you get to choose one comedy. What, 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 the Cobbler. The, cob- the, cobbler, the, is cobbler, my, yeah. the cobbler is my favourite. Don't mess with the Zohan. The witch. Don't, oh, you call yourself a fan. Oh, don't mess with the Zohan. I just can't understand what you're talking about. Uh, <laughs> uh, don't say stuff with loads of vowels in it. That's all. That is... And they say you're not censored in comedy as a woman these days. <laughs> um, uh, I have re- I, I've seen Don't Mess With... I, I kind of have watched, you seen it? I watched three at a time, so they're all, they're all the same. You've, been, you've worked with those guys who do the, the commentary of Grown Ups too. the podcast. Yes, the, yes, the Guy Montgomery and Tim yeah. Bat, yes. You've, you've done podcasts with them. It's the same yes. thing. I like watching... I wouldn't watch them 365 times a year or whatever they did. Was it once a month or once a month? No, it was once a month. Uh, well, yeah. once a week, once a week, so 52 once times. But it was worse um, uh, for the second season when we did uh, Sex in the City 2. Yeah. And, se- and that was oh, horrific. I don't think it was as bad as Grown Ups 2. No, it 100% is, 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 it? is worse. Yeah, they, they, longer, had, they, had, they had yeah, way longer, they had a way worse time doing it. <laughs> they really did, because it's a horrific film. But yeah. <laughs> and you've worked with them on their... Le- their new one is the, they're doing a third series of a sort of drama this time. Though. Yeah, it was um, We Are Your Friends with yeah. Zac Efron in it, a really terrible one about him trying to be an EDM DJ. Um, <laughs> or a couple of people say, yeah, it's horrific. Okay. I think that's actually, no, that was their worst season because it was almost like there was nothing to grab, you know. It was just so bad. It was so truly awful. Get them to do The Cobbler. Do you reckon? Yeah, go back to... Go back to Who's the seen The Cobbler? Has Everyone's anyone seen The Cobbler? Everyone's seen it now on my recommendation. Have you seen it, David? You what? haven't seen The Cobbler? Call yourself a fan of Richard Herring. Oh Any gosh. true Richard Herring fan has watched The Cobbler. In the Cow, cobbler. What's, the, what's the premise of the cobbler? Well, I talked to Nish about this last time he was on, so we can, I might talk to him about it again. Oh this my could God. be. Um, I've talked about it many times. Yeah. In the cobbler, yeah. he's a, Adam Sander is a cobbler. His father was also a cobbler. Yes. And Adam Sander <laughs> <laughs> discovers a cobbling machine at the back of the. <laughs> that when you cobble someone's shoes on it, well, i.e., mend someone's shoes on it, and then put on their shoes, which no cobbler would do, by the way. <laughs> Or they'd be struck out from the National Cobbler Society. Um, then you become the person. <laughs> Which, you know, you have to have the same size feet as them. That's the only... I can't wait for the dramatic re- uh, remake with Daniel Day-Lewis. <laughs> it's, fantastic. it's one of the least racist Adam Sandler films. Hey, and there's something. That's good. That's a win in some way. Though it's a little transphobic, I would say, in the current climate. Oh, my God. But, you know, Adam Sandler didn't know all that was going to change the... Yeah, what, well, he made it <laughs> six months. For that. He didn't know gay people were going to become accepted yeah. either, you know. Don't blame when the When he Sandler, made Chuck man. and Larry, he didn't know that it, would, it wouldn't be funny to be gay anymore. That, that, you would think that would always be funny. Do you, find, do you find that depressing when you go back and watch like some like uh, comedy classics that you watched when you were a kid and then you watch them again you're like, holy shit, what is going on here? Like, there's some truly dodge stuff in it. Yeah, yeah, there's a, you know, there's, it's, well, it's weird because you have to judge things by the time they were made in a little bit, I think, but it is, yeah. but even like, uh, Monty Python there's a, yeah. there's, it's pretty uh, sexist and racist it's like there's a surprising amount of uh, scantily clad women in Monty Python which you mm. wouldn't and Spike Milligan was sort of obsessed with that as well yeah yeah so it's uh, even I was watching um, I was watching Peep Show the other day right <laughs> There was there was like a yeah it was a full on like a, yeah it was it was a it was a storyline it was I was like you would not get away with this yeah uh, uh, in, in in this 
uh, as I borrowed a phrase, current climate. No. Current climate is such a funny <laughs> 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 Such a dad, they're like, current climate. Yeah. So your millennials fault. That's, that's it's you've ruined, you've destroyed fault. comedy. Yeah. Why can't we comedy? just joke about everyone in a horrible way? <laughs> just let us do that. You can still do it. We can. Yeah. I'll ask you a proper emergency question, not my stupid insect based one. Those okay. were, that was ridiculous thinking back on it. <laughs> no, I thought it was, there were legs. There was legs. Uh, well, I'll, get, I'll try it again. I'll try it again. Yeah. Oh, yeah. This is this. You probably have because you're from New Zealand. Question two eight nine. Have you ever met a shepherd? <laughs> I mean, have you ever not met a shepherd? So it's, it's probably the New Zealand version. I don't think I've met a shepherd. You've never met a shepherd. I met a farmer. It's not the same. <laughs> What's, well, how do you know a person's a shepherd? I probably have met a shepherd. They just probably weren't worth forthcoming with the fact that they're a shepherd. They've got a stick with a hook at the end. <laughs> Do you reckon shepherds always hold the shepherd? Yes. <laughs> what I love is Why that. Why would I... you become a shepherd and not <laughs> walk around with a crook? What I love is that I'm, lo I'm looking over your shoulder into the book and just seeing a tiny illustration of a shepherd <laughs> <laughs> holding okay, a little idea. crook. All right, here's a question for you. I like this one. Yeah. If there are ever sex robots, as any right pe thinking person hopes, yes. would they be self cleaning? <laughs> Or would there be another small robot that would clean the sex robot? <laughs> or would there be a person whose job was to clean out the sex robot before the next person used it? Can you think of a worse job? This is all about the context, because I would assume that if I've got a sex robot, that's like my sex robot, right? right. I'm not going to like have a sex robot I share with other people. Right, you, you're living in a dream world. They're going to be so expensive. <laughs> you're going to have to... Either visit a sex robot brothel or, yeah. or have some kind of timeshare on the sex robot. Unless the sex robot from the brothel falls in love with you and says, I'm only going to make love with you because I'm overriding my, I am overriding <laughs> my program. So I, I love think, you. I think, I'd, I think that's, the, that's how I'd meet. I'd be the person who cleaned the sex robot <laughs> at the brothel. And then yeah. one time the, the robot's like, hey... Um, do you want to go for a coffee sometime? <laughs> and I'll be like, yeah, wow, yeah. sure, as I was cleaning out whatever yeah. they have. <laughs> and, then we'd, and then I'd break them out of the brothel. Yeah, okay. Is that an answer or just yeah, a fantasy? No, Andy, <laughs> there are no wrong answers to the emergency questions. Yeah, it's wrong answers, but not great answers. <laughs> that was not a great answer. Some not, some not great questions. Um, I like that question. We can't, we can't. It's, yeah. How into sex robots are you as a concept? Pretty, pretty this, much into it, but I didn't think they would. Pretty much into it. I didn't think they would. Um, I didn't think they'd get, so I thought it'd be like 50 years time they'd be, you know. Yeah. I'm not, I don't want to have sex with like a blow up doll that just goes, no. uh, I want to have sex with a, you know, yeah. an indistinguishable. Sophisticated. Robot. And then my, my wife comes in and goes, what are you doing? I go, it's all right. It's just a robot. <laughs> I, um, I went to a VR park in Japan, yeah. right? And I've done... I, have, you, have you done much virtual reality stuff? I haven't, no. Um, so I did... I was doing a virtual reality stuff. It was, yeah. it, was, it, was, it, was, it was fine. But I was like, holy shit, I could fall in love with a VR boyfriend. Honest <laughs> to God. Like, that's how... I, I could probably do it. Like, because my expectations for a guy is if he shows me any type of attention, I'm like, um, sign me up. You know what I mean? So if it's a VR boy, I would, I would probably fall in love. I'm scared, I'm scared for the future. Yeah. Because I'm scared about what's going to happen to me romantically. But how do you... Aren't they, like... Would you have to put on, like, the gloves and the helmet and stuff? And Absolutely. How does it work? Yeah. Yeah. Well, all, all the Blade Runner 2049 is, a, is, you know, is a VR... It's like a hologram VR okay. girlfriend yeah. that he has. How'd you get in... Into it? <laughs> into... Into it, the... Into it. Into it. <laughs> Well, you, you, have a, you have a pro, you have a prox, you have a um, surrogate, um, okay. you know, you know, the like in the film. So a person. Yeah, a person. So you fuck a person while you're thinking of the virtual reality. I could do that already. I'm um, sorry. Uh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> how do you have sex, bro? Don't know how you do it up in England. <laughs> oh, I hope my wife doesn't listen to any of this. She doesn't. Don't worry. I hope she didn't fine. listen to the one where I had her on. Um, <laughs> oh God! This is this is going to be the, on the internet forever. It's going to be what? Like this as a record. This conversation is going to be out there forever. Yeah, it is. It's, it's uh, going to be catalogued at the British Library. That's the problem. We're going to send it out into space. Yeah. 
Do you, what do you think the latest time that this podcast will be listened to is? How, how far in the future do you think this one will be? I've been thinking about that because I do my own podcast yeah. and I was like, fuck, hopefully not long, eh? Like, hopefully <laughs> someone, ha- like, unplugs something and all podcasts gets deleted because we've all said some horrible stuff on these things. Um, yeah, but there's so reckon, many of them that people won't yeah. hear them. So that's essentially the same thing. I reckon I'd give it maybe 20, 2070. 2070? Yeah. Well, if you're listening to it after that, please email in RK <laughs> herring 1967 at gmail.com. If you're listening to this in 2070, that'd be yeah. awesome. But cool of those who listen to it in 2069, am I right? <laughs> <laughs> Here's a question from New Zealand, so you'll be able to answer this one. From New Zealand, okay. What is the biggest animal whose life you have saved? Um, uh, I don't know if I've saved a the cat. cat. The cat. The cat, I've saved, saved his life. Um, that's a full-on question. Thank you. Um, I, don't think I, I don't think I've gone bigger than a... Ladybird. <laughs> <laughs> Comes back to the ladybird full <laughs> circle, I love that. Oh, right, I've got, I've got a good question for you. I've got an idea for a sitcom called The Horny Time Traveller. Oh, uh, this yeah, sounds so right this up is, my alley. This is right up your So if you could travel, if you were the horn dog time traveller, which could be the New Zealand franchise of it... Yeah. What, I don't get audition for the one up here? No, you have to do, you have to do your one. What? Because otherwise people won't be able to understand what anyone's saying in it. <laughs> so it's, I mean, it's mainly going to be... I uh, can do your accent. It's mainly going to be vowels, because it's just... Uh, Ooh, uh, oh, uh, uh, and if you're doing the wrong vowel sound, people won't understand what's happening. I'm an, or, I'm so, an orny time traveller. Mm, lost my mojo, <laughs> innit? <it? laughs> yeah, baby, All yeah. right, you've got, you've got the role. If you were the horny time traveller yeah. and could travel anywhere in time and have sex with any historical figure, oh my God, this who is a, would you have sex with in honest history? Honest to God, this is my, my favourite question of all time. <laughs> a historical figure in history. Yeah. I mean, you know, it could be someone in the... Pre- it could just be someone in the present day. They're still in history or in the future. Yeah, <laughs> you're just using an ex-boyfriend. <laughs> <laughs> historical figure. Um, Cleopatra? Really, yeah. Yeah. You know, branch out. Yeah, why not? Uh... First experience with a girl, why not be a Cleopatra? <laughs> uh, I think she'd be, she'd be hot, right? So Cleopatra. Well, I mean, no, she was all right, I think. What do you mean she was all right? <laughs> she was all right. I think the, the truth of the matter is she probably wasn't all that attractive <gasps> if you look into the real Shit. history of it. Oh, you know, the tastes have changed so much, you know. I would actually love to see uh, how blue Rasputin's eyes were. Okay. So maybe, but I wouldn't want to fuck him. I wouldn't want to fuck him. Uh, but he, he would make you, though. Yeah. With his he charisma. would make you. Time's up, Rasputin. <laughs> Time's up. <laughs> that is easily the worst thing I've ever said <laughs> in my entire life. Um, uh, historical figure, um, uh, shit. Because uh, the thing is, when you say historical figure, you only just think of the bad people in history. You know I what don't, I mean? I think of the nice people. Like who? Uh, I would have sex with Anne Boleyn. He was very nice. Had very six, nice. six fingers. Do you reckon she was hot? Just the six fingers would do for me. This, this, this one, a little doing? bit of extra stretch. <laughs> <laughs> um, for what reason? <laughs> um, what about um, Charlie Chaplin? Yeah, but well, I'm not. It's not my taste, but you know, give it a go. What are you? You're really doing my ideas down, and you're in, 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 oh, <laughs> and oh, and all that. Oh, you're, okay, you're allowed to. Have no, I, I feel Chaplin. I feel embarrassed and insecure about my taste and, and, <laughs> and historical figures. I don't Would know. Would you have sex with Charlie Chaplin as him, or him dressed up as? He the definitely tramp? has to be dressed up as a tramp. So a little, the little mustache. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, Buster Keaton. I'd love to. I actually, I'd love to have. No, Gene Kelly. Who? <laughs> so I mean, yeah, hugely Gene Kelly, the greatest ass in the game. Okay. You check, you check that shit out tonight. Go on YouTube. He's got an impeccable um, ass. Yeah. And um, I'd love to have sex with him. Okay, that's, that's a fine answer. I feel like a creep. I feel like a creep. You had sex with Charlie Chaplin and Buster Keaton first. I feel like I a creep because uh, he, cause you see him in colour films and I think it's too close to home. You know what I mean? Like it's too... It's too modern. Yeah, it's too modern, yeah. yeah. I feel like Feasley could have happened. Yeah. <laughs> like when did Gene Kelly die? Probably 94, you know? I'm not sure about that. Anyone know when Gene, <laughs> Kelly, Gene, you know when Gene Kelly died, David? Yeah, my Gene Kelly go-to expert. Did he live a long time? I don't know if he was... Some he of lived them, a relatively long he? time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah, okay, Gene Kelly and you've got Anne Boleyn. Okay. So I'm ima- I feel like you're imagining it now. That's... I am. I'm going to think about it. 
Do you know who egged my house in Shepherd's Bush at the back? <laughs> when, when did it happen? I think it was before your time. Yeah, I think so. Goldsmith was still there. Maybe it was Stuart Goldsmith's um, last hurrah. It might, I think it might have been. Maybe he was just getting rid of his eggs. How many eggs before you moved in? Huh? How, who, why, why do people egg your house? How many well, eggs? That, uh, you know, there were some eggs thrown in my back garden by, I think, probably the kids next door. That's awful, man. Yeah. That's hugely Someone awful. Someone did a shit on my, my doorstep as well. What? Was that you? <laughs> How do you know that they did the shit on the doorstep or it was transported to... Tra- like, transferred no, you to could the tell, door. by the way. It's, it's, it it's settled, slid. yeah. It's <laughs> Perfect. It was just Beautiful. inside. If you go to my house, you, go, yeah. you can go and have a look. Oh, and you can't anymore. Well, you can. I mean, it's a bit of a trip. Yeah. Just to see where some shit was. <laughs> There's going to be a blue plaque there saying, Rose shat on this doorstep. Yeah, I don't know why you don't need to go, because you were there. You did it. <laughs> no, I don't think I could... Ha- you know, I, I would never do that to you, man. No, thank you. That's good yeah. to know. Not yeah. A, yeah, good, good. Yeah. It was absolutely Nish Kumar. That's... I think it would uh, Why would that be? It's on brand, you know. So has winning the award made a big difference in how things have gone? No, I did nothing today. Uh, <laughs> nah, it's been good. It's been nice. No, not really. It's, it's just a big, weird thing, but uh, it's a very surreal thing that ultimately doesn't, you know, it doesn't change much, but I still want to keep making shows and stuff. Uh, yeah. It's just, it's just random, really. It was very, very strange. Well, I mean, it's, it's incredibly impressive to win it now because there's so many shows. Yeah. And I think the standard is very, you know, well, I went Crazy to Edinburgh for a day and yeah. saw two shows and they were both just amazing. Yeah. It's, uh, and that was the thing is that uh, the, the, all of the nominees this year as well, it was just like amazing to be part of that group because they were all just genuinely people that I just think are incredible. Yeah. It's, it's, it's just... It's very cool. But, is it you know. a, does it feel like a millstone a little bit? The, the, a little bit. The, the, the expectation, or is it? Yeah, a, little, a bit more like pressure, I think, to, to do to do uh, good. <laughs> <laughs> I don't really like that, but um, but I put enough pressure on myself, I think. But um, but yeah, it is a bit of an expectation, I think. But I, I won't I won't complain about it, and I won't give it back <laughs> uh, either because that's, that'd be gutting to do. Yeah, I, I don't know. It's it's a weird it's a weird thing, but yeah. Um, uh, but it's it's very nice. Good. Yeah. Well, you know. <laughs> that's the most New Zealand answer of all time. Yeah, <laughs> like, yeah it's fucking cool, but I'm still a piece of shit. Well, but I would like know. to get into that. We've kind of slightly run out of time, and I was I was going to get into some uh, more stuff, but you know, fuck Nish Kumar. He wasn't even the. F- I didn't really want him to. I, I, wanted, I wanted Michael. It's crazy. I thought it was going to be Michael Sheen. I thought it was Michael Sheen. I mean, Do you know how much of a fan of Michael Sheen I am? No, me too. It's crazy. And I was going to talk to him about Frost really Nixon, and I was so excited. And, and then I booked someone you used to. Live yeah. With. <laughs> And it's, it's I, saw, I see him all the time. I saw him last week. Yeah. What is this? Sorry. It's gutting. <laughs> it's absolutely gutting. Imagine no, big how, fan, big imagine fan. Imagine how the audience feel. <laughs> no, he said, yeah, it's all right. It's all right. Sorry, sorry Nish. <laughs> feel bad about that. He can take it. Uh, well, look, I think we all... We're all and you play... Uh, what the best thing about your show um, that I've heard of, because I haven't seen it yet and I'm yeah. going to come and see it, is that you? Is it a spoiler to say that you play no. ping pong at the beginning? Of, no, yeah, I do. Uh, it's just also you invite people in the audience to play ping pong with you at the start of the show. Yeah, yeah, it was, it's a slash at a table from Argos, um, uh, kids three three quarter ta- size yeah. table, horrific ping pong played on it, but yeah. Uh, but yeah, super fun. I because I don't like I love doing stuff like last my last show I had a label maker, a Dymo label maker, and I'd make labels for people because I hate um, being backstage before a show because I feel like it's the most kind of embarrassing, truly embarrassing thing as a stand up to like amp yourself up for a show and be like, yeah, yeah feel like you're fucking Eddie Murphy and like, you know, like, yeah, I'm going to go do a show. So I think it's a very nice way of starting a show it in is, a chill like, way. It's fantastic. I mean, do you so ever fun. feel like just playing ping pong for the full yeah, hour? Completely. I, 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 re- I very much always go over, like, yeah. Yeah, people are like, you need to wrap this up now. <laughs> but it's all good because I have to fold up the table myself. So yeah. uh, it, that takes a, a bit of time as well. But no, nah, it's super fun. You should come and play with me. I will go, I'm going to come and play with you. I w- if I was doing I would play everyone in the audience and only do the comedy once I'd beaten everyone. <laughs> so it would be a very, very long show. Very Try good. and do a podcast of playing yourself a ping pong uh, uh, it'll work it'll work well uh, ladies and gentlemen do go and see Rose at the Soho Theatre in January or uh, wherever you listen to this in 2070 yes. what do you think or 2070 I mean, you'll, you will be working in 2070 probably so go and see Rose in 2070 if you're the person listening in 2070 it's 2070 yeah oh, will I be working I won't be alive fuck you'll be alive you're no young. way you're young no I'll way. be 103 or something in 2070 I'm still going do you reckon yeah fuck Got the stones to clear. I can't die. <laughs> I can't die now. 
ladies and gentlemen, Rose Matafeo. Thank you very much. We'll be back. Go and buy some stuff. Thank you very much for watching Raha Lasta Pa. Uh, remember, you can buy my book, Emergency Questions, from all good bookshops and Amazon and gofasterstripe.com slash EQ. Uh, you can get eight free craft beers from our sponsor, beer52.com slash Raha Lasta Pa. Uh, thanks very much for watching. Hope to see you again soon. Bye. <laughs>